of Jesus Christ. Now, in one minute, I want you to ask the Lord to send you a word in season that will cause a change of story for you as we end the fast today, which is our annual fast. You are asking, Lord, drop into my hands something that I will live to remember concerning the year 2021, the month of January. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Jesus, drop into my hands now the master key that will make me to remember today, to remember this month, to remember this year, all through the days of my life. Open your mouth and pray that prayer right now. The Lord is listening to you. The Lord is listening to you. The Lord is listening to you. Let him hear your voice. Let him hear your voice. We give you praise, Jesus. We thank you, Master. We thank you, Master. We give you all the glory. Thank you, and thank you, and thank you, and thank you, and thank you. We exalt your name in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Open your Bible with me to the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16. From verse 16. down to verse 31. Somebody please put it there on Facebook Live. Act of the Apostles, chapter 16, from verse 16 down to verse 31. Act of the Apostles, chapter 16, from verse 16 down to verse 31. And I read, And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought our masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God we showed unto us the way of salvation. And this she did many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out of her the same hour. And when a master saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them unto the marketplace unto the rulers and brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. And the multitude rose against them. And the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. Hmm. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately, all the foundations, all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison Awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself. 
supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light, and sprang in, and came trembling, and fell down before Paul and Silas, and brought them out, and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Let us pray. Sweet Holy Spirit of God, we thank you, we bless your name. For such a time, for such an hour as this, we understand from scriptures, for it is written, all scripture is given by the Holy Ghost. Therefore, today, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that Holy Ghost, you will breathe upon us today. You will grant us access to revelations from your word. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, you will cause us to experience a transformation, a turning, an opening via your word today. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask that you grant us understanding from your word that we result in the opening up of our heavens today in the mighty name of jesus we thank you sweet holy spirit thank you for your word thank you for your love in jesus mighty name we have prayed if your amen is loudest out there your miracle is next on the line today today we continue on our series exploring the extraordinary power of praise and then we are doing part four exploring the extraordinary power of praise and we are doing part four today exploring the extraordinary power of praise we're doing part four today but before we begin the teaching, let me share with you a word from the Lord for you. God sent me to you today. Firstly, let me say, it is with joy that I welcome you to the last day of this fast, this annual fast for the year. And I believe for very many of us, it has been an adventure. For many also, it has been a period of instruction. For some people, it is a season of correction. But in whatsoever way it has been for you, I want to assure you, my God, that God's word, everything concerning you, is falling into pleasant places for you today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. But you might say, Apostle, I could not follow well. I was sick. I think I could not do every day. I did only some days. This is the good news. God does not answer your prayer because of your fasting. God answers your prayers because of his integrity. Write it down it will help you. God does not answer your prayers because of your fasting. God answers your prayer because of his integrity. His integrity. He watches over his word to perform it. Jeremiah chapter 1 verses 11 and verse 12. He watches over his word to perform it. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 11 and verse 12. So God answers our prayers because he wants to uphold his integrity. Number two, God answers our prayer because of his name. Because of his name, he answers our prayers because of his name. So you must understand that his unchanging word that is wrapped up in his name has guaranteed you answer to every prayer you have prayed this month in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And let me tell you, I decree over you and I prophesy today, this year 2021, shall be your own year of manifest testimonies i mean tangible testimonies in the mighty name of jesus christ i don't care 
what your challenge is. I don't care what your situation may be. But what I have to tell you today that God told me to tell you. Because he said to us last Sunday, don't forget. He said, new song and greater glory is not a slogan. It is a prophetic verdict. New song, greater glory is not a church slogan. No, it is a prophetic verdict. So because it is a prophetic verdict, I speak to you from my office as a prophet. In this year, 2021, it will be your year of amazement in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. That prophetic verdict which I'm talking about is wrapped up in the book of Isaiah chapter 58. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 10 and verse 13. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 10 and verse 13. Because please understand, every promises of God is tied to your obedience of an instruction. Every prophecy of God, of scriptures, is tied to your obedience of instructions. Your obedience of instruction. Your obedience of instruction. So in that Isaiah chapter 58, these are the instructions of God and the promises of God wrapped up together in that scripture. And I will show you now, before we go to the teaching proper, Isaiah 58 verse 10, you have fasted for 21 days, but what else do you need to do for you to enjoy the profits of fasting and of prayer? Verse 10, Isaiah 58, not 53, Isaiah 58, 5, 8. Verse 10. And if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted, then shall the light rise in obscurity and thy darkness shall be as noonday. Verse 13. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thy own ways, nor finding thy own pleasure, nor speaking thy own words, verse 14, then shall thy light break forth. Then shall you delight yourself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. For the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. So there are three things you must do, beginning from today. To make your fasting effectual. To make your fasting effectual. Number one. Prophetic instruction. You must take care of the needy. You must take care of the needy. And the less privileged. You must take care of the needy. And the less privileged. And you will begin to do that with your family. You must take care of the needy and the less privileged. And you must begin with your family. You can't begin to spend money on people outside and then your family members are in penury. It is an anathema. You must take care. It is God's commandment. You must draw out your soul to the hungry. 
You must take care of the afflicted, those who are going through challenges. Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 17. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 17. Hear what the word says. Proverbs 19, verse 17. He that had pity upon the poor lended unto the Lord. Proverbs 19, 17. He that had pity upon the poor, he lended unto the Lord. And that which he had given, the Lord will repay him again. Hmm. That which he gives to the poor. And you know, that which you have given to the poor, God will repay you again. And when God wants to repay you again, he repays you in multiple folds. In multiple folds. So it is very important. You must give to the poor. You must give to the less privileged. Psalm 41 and verse 1. Psalm 41 and verse 1. Psalm 41 and verse 1. Blessed is he that considereth the poor. The Lord will deliver him in the time of trouble. Blessed is he that considereth the poor. The Lord will deliver him. So your deliverance is tied to your helping the poor, the needy, and the less privileged. If you turn away your eyes from them, and you say, okay, I give only my tithe, I give my offering, that is enough. My dear, you are deceiving yourself. Your deliverance is not wrapped up in your offerings. It is worship that you are doing. But when you want to provoke your deliverance, you must give to the needy and the afflicted. Yes. Psalm 41, verse 1. Bless, Abora, just Blessed is the man that considers the poor. He is always thinking about them, how he can solve their problem, how he can help them, whether they be members of the church, whether they be members of their family. It means to say, as much as God blesses you, you must consider the poor in your family, in the household of God, and then outside the church. You cannot go and give outside when a member of your church is in hunger. That is wickedness. That is, you cannot pretend to be serving God, and then you are not giving to the needy. So you need an understanding. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 9. Proverbs 22 and verse 9. He that hath a bountiful eye shall be blessed. For he giveth his bread to the poor. He giveth his bread to the poor. So when you give to the poor, oh my goodness, you are entitled to the blessings of God. As written in Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 14. Giving to the poor opens up your heavens. He that giveth to the poor, he lendeth unto God, and that which is given shall be given back to him. And I trust God. God will give you back in a multiplied fold. <laughs> he gives you back in a multiplied fold. So when you give to the poor, you open up your heaven. And what does that mean? You make yourself by intention to become a reservoir for God's blessing. The truth is this. God is looking for men all over the world. God don't spend money in heaven. They don't spend money in heaven. What is Spent in heaven is revelation. But what God does is when you are a giver and you become a vessel, God grants you access to insight to solve problems that brings you financial reward. That is how God operates. God gives you insight to solve problems because 
money, according to the definition in economics, is what we give in exchange for goods and services. I mean, for those of you who did economics in, in secondary school, money is the exchange of goods and services. That's all. That's all money. That's how to get money. It's either you are selling something or you are giving a service. Then you get money. So what God does is when you make yourself a vessel and your heavens are open, you have supernatural insight to see what others can see. And then you exchange those services and you get the rewards of finances. Number two, that you must do which is a prophetic instruction. And the Lord bid this so. God give you this command today is you must honor God. By investing massively in God's work and God's agenda and God's business, you must invest massively. Massively, you must invest massively in God's work, in God's business, and in God's agenda. You must invest in it massively. Because, hear me, beloved of God. There is an outpouring right now of finances from heaven. There is an outpouring of the Abrahamic order of blessing. Right today's day down that this man said so to you. There is an outpouring of the Abrahamic order of blessing. And I am showing you. One of the ways to connect to it, you must invest massively in God's work, in God's business. Because as you take interest in God's business, God also takes interest in your matter. He becomes his personal challenges. And then he gives you access to the treasures of darkness and riches in secret places. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 1 to verse 3. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 14. Isaiah 45 verse 1 to verse 3. Isaiah 45 verse 14. Verse 1 to verse 3 say, Thus said the Lord unto Cyrus is anointed, whose right hand he has holding, to subdue nations under him, to lose the loins of kings, to open before him the two leaf gates, and the gates shall not be shut. I will go before thee and make the crooked path to be straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. I will give to thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of sacred places. That is the guarantee. Who is Cyrus? Cyrus was a man who took interest in God's business and God made him a channel of his blessings. Verse 14, God told Cyrus, I will let kings, great men, great women come to you in chain. You will speak to them, they will be loose and then they will know that truly the hand of God is upon your life. You must honor God. Many of us will sing this song. I will dance like David danced. I will sing like David sang. But can you do what David did? <laughs> Jesus told the children of Israel in John chapter 8. They said, we be the children of Abraham. And then Jesus told them, if you be the children of Abraham, do you know the works of Abraham? If you want to be like David, you must do the works of David. David is anointed. He was a priest. He was a prophet. He was a king. But he was not just this three. He had a soft spot in the heart of God. But most times we think it is only because David was a man of praise. No. David was a man who catered for the poor. After the death of Saul and his son Jonathan, David said, Doth there remain a man of the house of Saul that I may show him favor? And Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, was still alive, even though he was a cripple. 
David sent for him and returned back to him what was his due right as a son or a prince of a king. Hear what David said. First Chronicles chapter 22. Let me show you. Verse 14. First Chronicles chapter 22 and verse 14. Let me show you what David said. Now, First Chronicles 22 and verse 14. Hear what David said. Now behold, this is David. In my trouble, I have prepared for the house of the Lord. Not in my abundance. Not when everything was okay for me. No, in the midst of my trouble. In the midst of my challenges. In the midst of my difficulty. I have prepared for the house of the Lord. And hundred thousand talent of gold. David is crazy. He is love crazy. And hundred thousand talent of gold. And a thousand thousand talents of silver. That thousand thousand means one million talents of silver. A thousand thousand means one million talents of silver. And of brass and iron without weight, for it is in abundance. Timber also and stone have I prepared that thou and thou mayest add there to out of his abundance. Let me show you something. First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 1 to verse 6. You want the Lord to turn around your captivity after this fasting? This is what to do. First Chronicles 29, verse 6. 1 to 6, sorry. Verse 1 to verse 6. Furthermore, David the king said unto all the congregation, Solomon my son, whom alone God has chosen, is yet young and tender, and the work is great. For the palace is not for man, but for the Lord. Now, hear this over, verse 2. First Chronicles 29 verse 2. Now, I have prepared with all my might, with all my might, for the house of my God, the gold for things to be made of gold, and the silver for things of silver, and the brass for the things of brass, the iron for things of iron, and wood for things of wood, only stones and stones to be set, glistering stones and of diverse colors, and all manner of precious stones and marble stones in abundance. Marble stones in, in abundance. Verse 3. Moreover, this is the heart of David speaking. I have set, because I have set my affection to the house of my God, I have of my own proper good. This is a king of gold and silver, which I have given to the house of my God, over and above. Underline it in your Bible. Over and above all that I have prepared for the holy house. Over and above. Over and above. And when you read over six, you will see the kind of person that David is. He invested massively in God's business. This year, we have massive projects to be done in Africa. Building projects, feeding projects, and all manners of projects. So you need to plug in to enjoy this fasting, the profitings that come with it. If you read that Isaiah 58, it says, Then shall your light break forth. This is what to do to make your light break forth. This is what to do that will make you to ride on the high places of the earth. This is what to do. You can make a monthly budget out of your salary. I said, you know what? Every month I'm going to be giving something towards a building project, towards feeding 
towards taking care of children. Now, you just need to get involved, get engaged in God's business all through the year 2021. And by those investments, hear these secrets if you don't know. You are writing a covenant in the name of your children. We invest in God's business. God told David, <laughs> because of all these things you have done, my name will not be removed from Israel. Your seed will always sit on this throne forever. Do you know the difference between the time David was born and Jesus was born? A thousand four hundred years. A thousand four hundred years. A thousand four hundred years. From the generation of David to when Jesus was born. A thousand four hundred years. And God still kept his word. Even when Solomon misbehaved, the son of Solomon misbehaved, for God not to take all of the kingdoms, the twelve tribes of Israel, away from David, God reserved one. And make sure he maintained his integrity. So you need that understanding. When you invest in God's business, you are not doing God a favor. You are not doing your pastor a favor. You are only doing your generations unborn favor. You are writing their name in the covenant will of God. So that the hand of God can be upon them. You can't say you are a Christian, you are a believer, and you don't have a block in any building. That is called the name of uh, the God by the name of God. There is no church in your village, but you are building houses for yourself. You are buying things for yourself. But the house of God lies in ruins. Habakkuk chapter Haggai, sorry, chapter one, from verse one to verse ten. Consider now, consider now. You have left my house in ruins. Consider now, consider now. Number three. For you to maximize the benefit of your fasting, you must be a soul winner. A soul winner. Nothing is of a higher value to God on the face of the earth than the souls of men. Nothing. Nothing carries a higher value in the sight of God on the face of the earth like the souls of men. God's greatest investment is Jesus. And then God gave that investment free of charge that man might be redeemed from the plagues of sin, from eternal death into eternal life. For God was in Jesus reconciling the world unto himself. No wonder John 3 verse 16, for God so loved, God so gave. God had nothing more to give all that God could give was Jesus. He, Jesus was the ultimate that God could give. And God gave him. So if you partner with God in soul winning, then your darkness is turned to light. Mark chapter 16 and verse 16 to verse 20. Mark 16, 16 to verse 20. God also, when they want, he was with them. Walking signs, walking wonders. You want to command divine presence that makes your enemy to bow at your appearance? Beloved, then you must be a soul winner. This year, we have Project 1423. In Luke chapter 14, verse 23, Jesus gave them a command. Go ye unto the highways, verse 23, and compel men that they may come, that my house may be full. Compel them, go and bring them. So when you see someone who wants to come to church, he said, I don't have transport fare. I, can, I don't know how to get to church. You tell him, you know what? Your monthly ticket, I will buy it as long as you go with me. You are partnering with God. You are partnering with God. And it is a commando. It is not if you like. No, it's a command. Go ye and compel them to come that my house might be full. And so once you do that, there's nothing else. You can invest in flyers. Pay for the printing of the flyers. You can invest in banners. You can invest in crusades. And say, you know what? I can't preach, but I can sponsor a preacher. That is how to do it. 
I remember in 2014, I wanted, a, I wanted to hold a crusade. And the Lord raised up someone to be a blessing. He was not to be in the crusade. He could not come. But his money got so saved and got the name of Jesus glorified. That is how to do it. If you do these three things I've told you, what are the results you will get? Let me show you that. Because we are motivated by understanding the benefits that accrue to us when we don't want to do. Number one. And those benefits, we see them in Isaiah 58 verse 11. Put it out there in Facebook Live. Isaiah 58 verse 11. The benefits of this prophetic instruction. Isaiah 58 verse 11. Isaiah 58 verse 11. Hear what it says. And the Lord shall guide thee continually. The Lord shall guide thee continually. So when you do these three things, number one, you will enjoy divine guidance. You will enjoy divine guidance. And the Lord shall guide thee continually. You will enjoy divine guidance. He said, and satisfy thy soul in drought. Number two, you will enjoy supernatural provisions or providence. Supernatural provision or providence. When you take care of the poor, you give towards God's work, and then you sponsor his kingdom, or then or you go after source aggressively. God will provide for you. Testimonies abound. Testimonies abound. I remember when I newly came to Europe. And I was believing the Lord to, for document. I was going after soul. I was going after the kingdom. Kingdom business was all I dared to do. You can ask my wife. He, now every weekend from Friday to Sunday or Monday. I am out on the field for God. I travel 620 kilometers every Sunday. But here we are today. Supernatural providence. Number three, you will enjoy good health. You will enjoy good health. You will enjoy good health. Good health is a function of what we do, not just of what we eat or the medications we take. When you engage yourself in advancing God's cause. The Bible says the Lord your God shall bless your bread and your water and it shall take away sickness from the midst of thee. He will take away sickness from the midst of thee. You will enjoy good health. Number four, you will experience fruitfulness on all sides. You are not permitted to be barren. In that Isaiah 58 verse 11, he said, And thou shalt be like a watered garden. Thou shalt be like a watered garden. That is fruitfulness on all sides. Financially, materially, physically, spiritually, you are fruitful. Fruitfulness on all sides. And then number five, you will experience unending supernatural breakthroughs. Unending. Because that same scripture says, and you shall be like a water garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. Whose waters? You will be like a spring of water whose waters fail not. Unending supernatural breakthroughs. 
unending supernatural breakthroughs. Okay. Having said this, having said this, let us find out today now what are the benefits of praise. When I engage, last week we looked at the triggers of praise. The upper week we looked at the requirements of acceptable praise. We look at what praise entails. But now let's find out what are the benefits of a praise lifestyle. I'm not saying doing praise once a month, no, or once a year, no. What are the benefits of a praise lifestyle? Because if you don't understand this supernatural switch, you might underrate it and you will be on the losing end. You will underrate it and be on the losing end. Because this is the truth. There is so much of untapped power in praise. We have not tapped enough of the power in praise. So much of untapped power in praise. But we need to do it in the due order. Then we will enjoy the benefit. And that is what we looked at last week. We look at the due order. First Chronicles chapter 15, verse 13. And the Lord made a breach upon us because we did it not according to the due order. The due order. The due order. The due order. So I wrote this out to bless you for the time we have. Number one, praise carries enormous untapped power. It is a reservoir of power. My goodness. Praise is a reservoir of power. I mean divine power. Praise is a reservoir of divine power. Malabaso <laughs> Tayaga. When a man he lives a praise lifestyle, he is a dynamite. You touch him, he explodes and he destroys you. He is a dynamite, a walking dynamite. You touch him, he explodes and he destroys you. Praise carries within it, within it. Potential power, enormous power. Number two, write this down. When you live a lifestyle of praise, you become God full. You are full of God. You become God full. You become God full. You become God full. When you live a lifestyle of praise, you become Godful, and when you are Godful, you become wonderful. That is it. When you live a lifestyle of praise, you become so full of God, and because you are so full of God, your environment, your circumstances, your life, your business, your children, everything that concerns you, they result in wonders. Number three, write this down. <laughs> Praise rude men are pathfinders. When you see a man of praise, that is a pathfinder. That is a record breaker in the making. A man who is living a lifestyle of praise is a pathfinder. You know why? The man has access to God's heart. So he knows what is to be done part time, part time. God is revealing every step to the man. He has access to the mind of God. Praise ruled men are pathfinders. They hold the key to God's heart. Number four, praise is a covenant way for continuous change of level. Praise is a covenant way for continuous change of level. 
Praise is a covenant way for continuous change of level. The man David is a typical example. David had every odd working against him. He was the eleventh child of the family. He was at least to be considered. He lacked the physical features of a king. He lacked the characteristics of a king. He was not a soldier. He was a shepherd. He has never been in the army. He has never handled any weapon. But he was just a man. I can imagine in my mind, in my spirit man, when David is in the field with his father's sheep, how David will dance at the end of the sheep, the end of the field, sorry, to the other end. I, I imagine in my mind, in my little mind. And then God said to himself, I, I think I like this guy. He is after my heart. He thinks like me. He knows what I want. He knows what pleases me. And boom, God releases upon him immeasurable graces. Immeasurable graces. That's what God did. And if you must matter in this end time agenda, there is an end time agenda. If you must matter, if you must matter, you must be a man of praise. You must be a man. I'm not saying you do praise occasionally. No, you live it as a lifestyle. I heard the story of a great man of God in Nigeria. Mike Mudok came to Nigeria and he visited. And from one place where they went to, to the other place, this great man of God today has said, praise the Lord. And Mike Mudok told the man of God, I have heard you say praise the Lord more than 52 times. I've counted 52 times. You said praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So you need that understanding. A lifestyle of praise. We endear you to the heart of God and you will matter because of it. Oh, you will matter. David is an example of men of praise. Don't you see the guy? David is dangerous. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, he was just anointed king. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, the father told him, Go and meet your brothers, go and give them bread and cheese. He came and he could hear the man called Goliath. Speaking terrible things. And then something stared inside of him. And he said, who is this one circumcised Philistines? Who is speaking ill concerning the armies of the Lord of hosts? <laughs> His brother said, shut up. I know, say, I know, I know. And David says something powerful in that scripture. Is there not a cause for it? Did God not bring me here for a reason? So he was a man of praise. Fulfilling purpose. Fulfilling the mind of God time and we saw the characteristics of a man of praise in David he was brilliant he was bold he was wise he was anointed so when you're a man of praise you become valiant you are bold you are bold you are bold you become wise the servant of David said ah, and thou know my servant my Lord David he is as wise as an angel he has capacity to know all things. Second Samuel chapter 14 verse 20. Thou art wise as an angel. And he was anointed. He was anointed. Very anointed. David, on one time, he wanted to go to a battle. There was no prophet around. He told them, bring me an effort. Bring me an effort. Let me by myself consult with the Spirit of God. And then the Holy Ghost gave him direction. So you need that understanding. You need that understanding. David was so anointed. He was, he was conducting deliverance for, for Saul. Do you know? David was so anointed. He was, he was conducting deliverance for Saul. First Sam, uh, second, I think 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 23. Because the spirit of God had departed from, Samuel, from Saul... When an evil spirit came upon Saul, when David is playing and singing, then deliverance is happening. He was conducting deliverance for Saul. So, to live a lifestyle of praise is absolutely to your advantage. So let me show you some of those advantages today. 
We'll do some today and then next week Sunday we'll round it up. And as we say these things now, I want you to bring your communion to the table now and open your heart for an impartation. 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 Something is about to drop for you now in the mighty name of Jesus. God said to me on the 3rd of February 2008, you have prayed to me, but have you praised me? And when I engage in it, he said to me, my son, Emmanuel, there is power in your praise. I heard it from his mouth. Life, 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 life and direct. I heard it from his mouth. There is power in your praise. So number one, benefit of praise. Because I'm believing God. Ah, yada. Whatsoever work in my hands, from today by the Spirit of Jehovah, it will begin to work in your hands also in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Whatsoever give way for me, it will begin to give way for you also in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So number one, Let's find out the benefits of a praise lifestyle. I'm not saying church praise. I'm not saying occasional praise. I mean a lifestyle ruled by praise. A lifestyle ruled by praise. You will be like Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 17 down to verse 19. Though the fig tree do not blossom, they then I might not be fixed on the stone. Yet will I praise him. I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. He will set my feet like hands feet. And then he will cause me to ride on the high place of the earth. A praise lifestyle. Irrespective of your circumstances. You don't have a downtime. You don't have a down moment. You are like Joseph. He was a prisoner encouraging other prisoners. Come on now. He was a prisoner encouraging other prisoners. And then God just said, you know what? People like this also in the prison. They go to the palace. From a prisoner, he was translated to become a prime minister overnight, overnight. By the communion table today, as the Lord lived who I am and whom I serve, I see a translation, a change of level, a, a rapid change of levels in the name of Jesus Christ. Number one, benefit of praise. Praise takes you into God's presence and helps you to sustain His presence. There are two things, though. Praise will bring you to God's presence. Yeah. And then praise will help you to sustain that presence. Praise will take you to God's presence. Psalm 100 and verse 4. Verse 3 and verse 4. Come into His presence. Enter into his gates with praise and into his, into his gates with thanksgiving and into his gates with praise. Know ye that he is our God. And we are the sheep of his pasture. So in praise brings you to God's presence. And when you enter his presence, your circumstances automatically change. Your circumstances automatically they change. Second Chronicles chapter 5, verse 11 to verse 14. Praise, take you to God's presence. And you need God's presence in a wicked world which we live in. This world is wicked. Psalm 74 and verse 20. Have respect unto thy covenant, O God, for the dark places of the earth are filled with the habitation of cruelty, the habitation of wickedness. The habitation of wickedness. We are living in the habitation of wickedness. The habitation of wickedness. Psalm 74 verse 20. Have respect unto thy covenant, O God, for the dark places of this world are filled with the habitation of cruelty. Only God's presence can deliver you from the wickedness of the hour. So you want to command deliverance, boy, live a lifestyle of praise. You become untouchable, unmolestable, irresistible. 
That's the way it works. Number two, benefit of praise. When you live a lifestyle of praise, you command triumph and victory endlessly, effortlessly. When you live a lifestyle of praise, you live a lifestyle of triumph and victory endlessly and effortlessly. You are the one in charge, not the devil. God punish the devil and his mother-in-law. You are the one who is in charge. You are the one who is in charge. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a treasure sword in their hand to execute judgment. Raka Sharia Beta. You are executing devastation into the camp of the enemy. And then you live a life of triumph. You live a life of triumph. You live a life of triumph. Psalm 149, verse 3, down to verse 7. You live a life of triumph. There is no, ah, hear this. There is no assault of the devil yeah, that can stop a man of praise. No assault of the devil. Even Satan himself is scared of praise. He knows. He knows. This one will interest you. Number three. When you live a lifestyle of praise, you supernaturally arrest, interrupt, and destroy the plans of the enemy. You bring confusion into their midst. When you live a lifestyle of praise, you supernaturally arrest, you interrupt, and then you destroy the plan of the enemy. You destroy their plan. First Chronicles chapter 20. When you begin to read from verse 16 down to the end, as they began to sing, as they began, as they began, there was confusion. How do I know there was confusion? He said, and every man helped to destroy his neighbor. Every man helped to destroy his neighbor. Every man helped. There was confusion in the camp of the enemy. You supernaturally, every time you praise God, you have put confusion in the camp of the enemy. That's why you cannot afford to not live a lifestyle of praise. Number four. Benefit of praise. Praise open up for us a covenant gateway of the flood gates of heaven. When we engage in praise, there is a covenant that is enacted and then the flood gates of heaven is open. The flood gate is open. The flood gate is open. When you engage in praise, the flood gates of heaven is open to you. It's a covenant. It's a covenant. The gateway of blessing, the gateway of triumph, the gateway of peace is open to you. And number five for today, benefit of praise. Praise enables us to experience the display of the power of God and the miraculous, both in our life and in our environment. Both in our life and in our environment. So every time I'm praising God, I am invoking the display of the power of God. Exodus chapter 15 and verse 11. Who is like unto thee, O God, who is like unto thee? 
among the God who is like unto thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders, doing wonders. Exodus 15 and verse 11. Doing wonders. Doing wonders. When you live a lifestyle of praise, you invoke the display of the power of God. <laughs> I found out something very interesting. I found out something very interesting. <laughs> About them. You know, hear this in closing as we close today. The toughest battles in the Bible, as I did my research, we are all overturned by the power of praise. The toughest battles in the Bible. And I'll give you about six of them. <laughs> One of the toughest ba battles in the Bible was the crossing of the Red Sea. It was praise that opened up the Red Sea. You say, man of God, how do you know? But Exodus 14 tell, told us that Moses lifted up the rod. Yes, that is true. But while Moses lifted up, lifted the rod up, something was happening under. How do I know? Psalm 114, from verse 1 down to verse 7. When Israel went out from a strange land and Judah, now praise was his sanctuary. The sea saw the presence of God and it fled. And God was asking him, What ail thee, O sea, that you fled? Why are you running like a lamb, O ye hills and mountains? So the Red Sea opened up at the instant of praise. The Red Sea opened up at the instant of praise. Psalm 114, verse 1 down to verse 7. Number 2. Battle, strongest battle in the Bible was the wall of Jericho. Joshua chapter 6 from verse 1 to verse 20. They went around the wall. According to the description of the Bible, the wall of Jericho, six cars can drive on it simultaneously. Six, six. I don't think there is a racing field that can take six cars. Six. Six cars simultaneously at the same time. So even if the wall fell on the ground, it was still a wall. But when they made a shout, the wall sank. Every man went over it to the other side. Number three, the battle of Jehoshaphat with the Moabites in First Chronicles chapter twenty. Three nations came out against one nation. There was no way Jehoshaphat could survive it. He knew. That was why he went to cry to God. Oh God, we have done all we know how to do. Will you not help us? Will you not judge them? And then boom, the, the Spirit of God should have told Jehoshaphat, you should fast and pray. You should cast and bind. But no, he told them, you need to sing and to praise me. And as they began to sing, God took over. As you begin to sing today, I see God take over your battles, fight your battles, and win your battles in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Number four was the opening of the prison door for Paul and Silas. There was a plan to kill them. There was no way of escape. The only way of escape for them was praise. And Paul understood the dynamics of praise. And as they began to praise, the other prisoners heard them. And I want to believe in my spirit man as it is the nature of man. You know, maybe inside the prison they were thieves, they were robbers, they were people who committed rape and all those things. And when they hear Paul and Silas, they are singing, they are praising God. They say, ah, look at all these idiots. They, know, they will never live here. They don't know anything. They were mocking them. But this is what praise does. Every time people mock you when you engage in praise, God makes you. And Jesus told them, follow me and I will make you. It takes the making of God on the face of the earth to be a man of impact. 
So praise solved that issue. He did not just solve the matter, he gave them a promotion. Number five, another battle was the battle against debt. Only praise can humiliate debt. Only praise can humiliate debt. Only praise can humiliate debt. Only praise. Jesus came to the tomb of Lazarus. John chapter 11 from verse 1 down to verse 40. And when Jesus came there, he did not cast out the spirit of death. Jesus said, Father, I thank you. I know you hear me. He understood that praise is omnipotent. I thank thee. So I came to this conclusion by my understanding. Praise carries resurrection power. Praise carries resurrection power. It can bring back to life anything that is dead. Praise carries resurrection power. Praise carries resurrection power. Praise. I don't care what is called dead. Your womb, your body, your business, your life, anything called dead. As you engage in praise, as you praise God this month, I see them jack back to life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Number six. Toughest situation faced by Jesus again is the feeding of the 5,000 in the book of John chapter 6. How can Jesus feed 5,000 people in the wilderness? And he asked Philip, Philip, how do you think we can feed this? Uh, <laughs> Philip said, oh God, you must be joking. We're in, the, we're in the bush. In the bush here, there's no food to eat. Even if we send people to town to go and buy food, 200 penny worth of bread can't feed this multitude. And you know when the Bible tells us 5,000 men in every crusade, women are more. So women are always times two of a man and then with their children. So times two of, of the men is 10,000. With If you say one family has a child, that is 5,000 children, 10,000 women, 15,000, 5,000 men, 20,000 people in the wilderness. And then Jesus took five loaves of bread and two fishes. Father, I thank you. I know you hear me always. And then, supernaturally, there was increase. Bread was multiplied inside the basket. If you praise God for the little, that little you have will soon become surplus. That's what praise does. So you must not look at your situation. You must look at the word of God when you engage in praise. So no matter how tough your battle is, praise is the answer. No matter how tough your battle is, praise is the answer. And thank God today as we are rounding up, we are taking the communion. There is so much of revelation in the communion table. I have lived on, that, on those revelations, on the things I found out from scriptures. This Communion table is not a church ritual. The communion table is a mystery of a table that speaks. It is a mystery of a table that speaks. How do you know? Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 24 to verse 26. The Bible tells us it is of the blood of the Lamb that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. So the blood that speaks the body speaks because Jesus said, Whosoever eateth my flesh, he was speaking concerning the bread. So that word of God, which is the bread, is flesh. This is the word. This is the word. And when you eat it, it brings health to your body. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20 to verse 22. And please note also, this communion is a spiritual covenant between you and God. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. So every time you take the communion, you are telling Jesus, I did not forget what you do. You also do as thou hast said. Psalm 119 verse 49. Do as thou hast said. Do as thou hast said. And God is not a man that is should lie. Neither the son of man that is should repent. Everything he said, he is able to do.
the communion table is a place of exchange. The communion table is a place of exchange where we exchange our weakness for his strength, our hair, our sickness for his health, our mortality for his immortality, our carnality for his spirituality, our weakness for his strength. is a place of exchange. John chapter 6 and verse 50. The communion table is the place or the source of life. John chapter 6 verse 35, John chapter 6 verse 50, John chapter 6 verse 53. I am the bread of life. He that eateth of this bread of life, he shall not die. Even if he be dead, he will yet rise again. He will yet rise again. He is, I didn't say it is. Hear me. I didn't say the communion. I didn't say it is. I said he is. He is. The communion is a person. The life of the flesh is in the blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. That is why we do the two together. The life of the flesh is in the blood. Is in the blood. So you need that understanding. So what we are partaking of is eternal life. What we are partaking of is immortality. What we are partaking of is health and vitality. What we are partaking of is vigor and energy. The communion is not a meal. It is not a thing. It is a person. Psalm 110 Verse 1 to verse 3. Verse 3 says, The Lord shall send for the rod of his strength. This is the rod of the strength of God. Exodus chapter 4 verse 17. This is the rod of God. This is the rod of God. So when I take it in, it goes to locate whatsoever is the rod of the enemy. And like the rod of Aaron swallowed up the rod of the Egyptian, this rod goes there to swallow them up. It absorbs them. It sucks them up. Is it diabetes? Is it hypertension? Is it sick, any kind of sickness? Is it have menstrual pain? Is it a, a fibroid or fibromia? This has the capacity to neutralize it. And I see that power manifestly come to play in your life today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The communion table, finally, is the healing balm of God. It is the healing balm of God. When you take it, you find healing. I, I caught a revelation many years ago about the man called Smith Wigglesworth. And I went to read everything I could lay my hands upon about Smith Wigglesworth. And I found that Smith, Wigglesworth, Smith Wigglesworth, though he was uneducated, he was an illiterate plumber. But God used him so mightily. He was so anointed, his wife died. And I, I write that he took the dead body of his wife and placed it on the wardrobe. And told the wife, I command you now, come back to me. And the dead woman came back to life. And then God told him, Smith, I want her. To come be with me. <laughs> and then Smith laid down the woman again. And the woman gave up the ghost. You need to understand the dimensions of grace. What was his secret? He was partaking of the communion. Then, boom, the spirit of faith came alive in him. He could believe God for anything. He did strange, strange workings of miracles. People with tumor, with cancer came. He will give them blow in the tumor places. Boom! And the tumor will disappear. He was a weird man. Weird man. But yet, with faith to move any mountain. So when you partake of the communion, you are connecting with the faith of God, with the power of divinity. In one minute now, lift up your voice and begin to make demand on what you want the communion to do for you today. Open your mouth and begin to pray now. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Declare ye that ye might be justified. 
Declare ye that ye may be justified. Declare ye that ye may be justified. Declare ye that ye may be justified. Open your mouth and speak to God. As I take this communion, the Bible speaking, a leader, he ate angel's bread. He went in the strength of angel's bread for 40 days. This is the body of the Son of God. This is the flesh of God himself. This is the body of God himself. You can go in the strength of this meal all the days of your life. Ask him now, Jesus, as I take this, let there be a rigabo de le baya, le doze le tia, le paro de sia, rasha tagabasolete, libra cosa de brateke le da rota, rakosalo peyre de le tax, let there be a rejuvenation of my orgas, maca sota li parota sila yeda, rage broke de sia le ta. Let the fire of God burn every shaft in my body. Every shaft, every shaft, every shaft, every shaft, every shaft, every shaft in your body. Ask the fire of the Holy Ghost as you take the word to burn it up. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Now, take your communion and the body as I pray. Father, we thank you for your body which was broken for us. In John chapter 13, in the Last Supper, the world records that you took bread and you break it. And you told the apostles, this is my body which is broken for thee. Take and eat. And then you took the, the wine at the same time. And you gave thanks, and then you say, This is the blood of my new covenant which I have enjoined with you. We thank you for the power in the new covenant. Therefore, Father, therefore, today, as we partake of this covenant, as we enter into this covenant with you concerning the year 2021, in the name of Jesus the Christ. Let there be manifestation of God-likeness in every man in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the life of Christ be formed in your people in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let anyone suffering from any form of affliction, you foul spirit of diabetes, foul spirit of high blood sugar, foul spirit of hypertension, foul spirit of of miscarriages i cross your roots now in the mighty name of jesus christ i decree healings i decree healings i decree healings in your body for it is written that this bread which we shall eat shall be life to our flesh anyone called sick by the mystery of the communion i declare to you today in the name of jesus you are decreed healed you are decreed healed. You are decreed healed in the name of Jesus. Every form of menstrual hardship, every form of barrenness, I decree your time expires now in the name of Jesus Christ. From this day, begin to manifest the God kind of life that is named alone Jesus will forever be glorified. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Now, break the bread now, beloved. Break the bread now. And as you take this, I decree that the blessings of the table will find expression in your life from this minute, from this hour, in the name of Jesus Christ. You are not permitted to go down anymore in the name of Jesus. It is one with you it is well with your household. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Now take the communion. Give him thanks now. He has done great things. Give him thanks. Give him glory. Give him honor. Give him adoration. We have heard from the throne of heaven today. And we believe that God's word will not fall to the ground. God's word 
we find expression in our lives. Give him praise and give him glory. Give him praise and give him glory. Give him praise and give him glory. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. Amen. I pray for you now. As you go forth today from this service, I pray that the grace of God which passes all human understanding goes forth with you to color your destiny all through this year in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The grace of God that makes a man to be acceptable is released upon your life today in the precious name of Jesus. As you anoint yourself with your oils in your individual houses today, I pray that the mark of God will come upon your life, upon your family, upon your businesses. In the precious name of Jesus, no power of the enemy is permitted to afflict you anymore in the name of Jesus. This year, because of the anointing, it is written in the book of Isaiah, chapter 25. He says, And on that day his body shall be taken away from out thy shoulders. Today the body of the enemy shall be taken away from your shoulders. The yoke of the wicked, as the anointing comes on you today, shall be broken in the name of Jesus. I command everywhere the soul of your feet shall tread upon, God will give to you for a possession. This year, God will direct your power. This year, God will order your steps. This year, God will give you favor. This year, God will cause you to be blessed. In the mighty name of Jesus, as you walk in obedience, as you walk in the obedience of prophetic instructions from the mouth of God this year, you will not be disappointed. You will not see shame. You will not see shame. You will not see shame. You will not see reproach. Those who have mocked you in time past, as the Lord liveth, whose prophet I am, they are coming to celebrate with you this year in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Before the end of this year, everything you lay your hands upon to do, they shall prosper. Nothing is permitted to die again in your hand in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you today. The same oil of supply which I enjoy supernaturally. May you from this minute begin to enjoy the grace and the oil of supernatural supply and providence in the name of Jesus Christ. From this minute henceforth, may the God of heaven become your reward today. It will come to pass. I decree it will come to pass. Because he said to me, see, I've touched your tongue with the coal of fire. As you said, we say, therefore today I decree you are blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. And because I have called you blessed, no man, no cause can stand against you anymore. So shall it be. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Shall we share the grace together in great fellowship? Want to go? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now just anoint, anoint yourself now with your oil. Anoint yourself now with.